Okay, so we are recording. And so whenever you're ready, Myra. Today is October 19th. This is the Disability Access Advisory Committee meeting uh, beginning at about 1133. Um, and in attendance, um, if you're here, please say your name. So Saren. I'm here. Uh, Elise. I'm here. Tori. I'm here. Uh, Ruth. Here. And Myra. I'm here. Great. Okay. So I heard Tori has a question. Um, and so go ahead, Tori. So in our March meeting, there was a person waiting to uh, address us and it was Andy Bristol if you guys remember and then I think because the public comments were at the end of the meeting he left the meeting early and he has asked me what our stand was on the library renovations the accessibility renovations um, and that was in March and so would I direct him to read the minutes or what, how would I handle that? My sense was that she wanted somebody on this committee to serve on the, you know, to be a, either to work with the building committee. I don't know that anybody stepped forward to do it. Um, I don't know that we were this. really, I don't know that we were ever really given a plan no. um, to, discuss as far as our stand on the accessibility. And we never got a plan. Okay, I have a clarifying question. Are, uh, Tori, are you talking about the Jones Library or the North Amherst Library? I'm at the, the main library, the Jones. Okay. We did absolutely discuss the North Amherst Library from the standpoint of accessibility. I don't remember discussing the Jones Library from that perspective, except that she asked us if one of us would help them out on their committee. And I don't know if anyone ever stepped forward. They never came back to us. They never brought us a plan. And as far as the committee is concerned, um, we're not allowed to take a stand on whether the community should vote for it because it's not what we're supposed to do. But good right. question about the accessibility of it because I don't right. think she ever offered to discuss that except in the way beginning, right before COVID. Yeah. So Tori, um, I, uh, right before the meeting, I had indicated that on March 9th, the DAAC discussed this. I, I was mistaken. I, I thought you were talking about the North Amherst Library. So the Hi. DAAC reviewed that on the, on the March 9th meeting. And um, as Myra uh, pointed out, um, so the library director, Sharon Sherry, came to a DAAC meeting I want to say it was pre-COVID, yes. um, so I, I couldn't even tell you when, I, I feel like month. it was the winter, so it's like, what year are we? Uh, it I was feel February like, or March of 2020? maybe January, February, or March of 2020. We haven't seen her since. Right. Yeah, so I or could- Or heard um, from her since. It's January. Uh, okay, I could um, certainly, um, if, if this committee is interested to hear um, you, you know, where they, you know, uh, where they are at with the um, Jones Library project yes. um, in relation to, um, you know, uh, th thinking about ADA improvements. Um, I could ask Sharon Sherry to um, provide us an update about that. Um, is that something well, that folks would like to hear? Definitely. Given, given that there's a vote on it in November, yes. I think we should. Absolutely. Oh. Well, we won't meet again before the vote, but as soon as, if it passes, we absolutely have to get involved with it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, all right. I'll reach out to Sharon Sherry to um, just touch base with her about that. Um, you know, perhaps it's something that, you know, it's going to, uh, as you all indicated, there's a vote for it in November. So, um, if she doesn't have information right now, I'm sure as the you know months go on after this vote, um, you know I, I'm sure that that's something of interest for the town to to start talking about. 
Is there anyone on this committee that would like to work with them on those issues directly if it passes? I don't think we can be appointed to the building committee, although initially I think she was even interested in that. Um, but, but is there anybody who really wants to work with them uh, who's a, you know, who uses the library a lot, who really wants to? Can, can um, I just say something before yeah. we uh, see if there's someone? You know, um, there's a very good chance it's going to pass because in, yep. in, you know, in the newspaper, most of the letters have been pro. And part of their argument for the renovations has been to expand the aisles so that people in wheelchairs or whatever, are, you know, can access the the uh, the books. So I think uh, it's really critical for us to have input even after the vote. Um, you know, oh, given especially that after. one of their arguments, especially yeah. after. But there's, and also, it, what know, is a good chance it'll pass? Yeah. So does what anybody want to step forward to work directly with the committee and be sort of a conduit between us and them? She asked us to do that. Yeah. And, and, perhaps because, and perhaps this whole, um, well, there were probably um, uh, multiple reasons maybe that never um, got sort of um, implemented um, right. was probably because of COVID and um, the, um, how uh, members of the public have, you know, questioned, you know, whether the, the Jones Library library should be expanded or not, and hence the vote. And so, I'm, I'm perhaps that's why um, Sharon Sherry um, didn't have the oh, opportunity. I don't, to reach I don't back care out. about blaming. I'm not. I'm not interested in that. I just right. want to know if anybody wants to do it. I'll do it with somebody. I personally don't have time to step forward and do an extra. I would it entail? Well, I don't know, but you can, you know, if um, if the, if it passes, I mean, it's two weeks away. If it passes, um, you know, we, we should have a name that we're willing to put forward of somebody who wants to get involved in the planning. I don't use the library very much, so for me, it would not be a useful thing for them. I mean, I, I wouldn't be useful at all. Um, but uh, Sarah and Ruth, anybody? Uh, well, yeah, I, I, unfortunately, uh, um, I'm scheduled for some surgery, so I'm not really going to be available. Oh, no. But I, but I think that um, you know, we, even if we don't have someone, they, I, I think uh, Sherry or whoever else is, you know, going to be responsible for the implementation should be asked to come back to this committee um, with, you know, the more concrete aspects of how they're going to um, make it more accessible so that we can have comment and input at that point. You know, even without somebody from this committee, you know, being a liaison, we could still ask them as a whole committee to do yep. that. Uh, Myra, this is yep. uh, years and years ago. Maybe it was in 2018, or maybe even before that. I remember a group of us went to the library and met with Sharon. And I know in that group, there was Joe Tringali was there in that group too. So we looked at the things and we raised our comments and made our comments. And one of the uh, issues was getting upstairs to the meetings room and to the gallery up there. So we, they heard from us enough. So if there is any concern that they still want to bring some issues to us, you know, we are here, you know, and we can be easily accessible for them. But uh, I don't think there's anything that we can bring up that there's not already been discussed and not in their ideas. I wish I was as idealistic as you, Saren. <laughs> if you were there three years ago, you probably said everything that needed to be said and whether it left that room and got to the architect or got on the paper or was you know taken off because someone didn't like this or that. I have no idea, but I, they do need some oversight. I think Ruth um, is absolutely right. And, you know, it's our job to do it. So Maureen, if it passes, 
I think it's really a good idea to have her come to the meeting, which is our next meeting would be normally scheduled for the week after the election, which would be the 9th of November. And if she can come and talk to us about where things are, um, then we'll have something concrete because if it doesn't pass, there's no point, right? Sure, yeah, so um, I'm happy to reach out to Sharon Sherry um, and get an update from her and um, and invite her to a future meeting to discuss this. Um, and so, yeah, I'm happy to do that. Okay, cool. Thanks for bringing it up, Tori. Um, I have two announcements. One um, is we, I think everyone received some communication from Lynn Greisimer, who's the chair of the town council requesting our input if we have anything to say um, that we want them to think about in the evaluation of the town manager. So I just wanna make sure everyone got that and knows that we've all been invited to provide input. I don't think we're supposed to provide it as a committee. I think we're supposed to provide it as individuals on committees. So um, did everyone receive that? I don't remember getting that. Oh. I think I got it, but it was a while back. She sent another one reminder yesterday. All right, no, I'll have to I look. did not I'll have to. Directly uh, from her? From Lynn Greisimer, yeah. How do did you, you spell? Not... G-R-E-I-S something. M-E-R. Myra, uh, could, you... could you um, perhaps either uh, just forward me? I can me forward it. Yeah, I can yeah. send it to everybody right now. There you go. Yeah, um, yeah, I might have gotten it. Did you get it, Ruth? I did. And ac actually, I got two of them. So obviously, right. the, the announcement did go out. So, all right, I can send it again to everyone just to make sure. I don't know if anyone, what you're supposed to do is read, they're all attached. You're supposed to read the goals for the manager, and you're supposed to decide whether you have anything to say that pertains to our committee about whether those goals have been met. And one of them has to do with safety, um, health and safety. One of them, I don't know, there are, there are a bunch of them. Um, some of them are pertinent to this committee and some of them are not. And so if you have anything to say about the ones that are pertinent, she wants a response by the 29th, which I guess is a week from Friday. And if um, I'll just, I'll forward it to you before the end of the meeting. Thank um, the you. other thing I sent you this morning, because I got it yesterday, um, about accessible voting, which would not necessarily pertain to anyone except maybe Elise and me. Um, but apparently Worcester and Boston um, have developed um, mechanisms for people who are blind or visually impaired, cannot read a ballot, um, and uh, you know, to vote independently from a computer electronically if you want to. Um, and so I sent you the communication that I got. It has all the information about what you're allowed to do, even if you don't live in Worcester or Boston, if, that, if you wanna do that. And somehow I think that should go to the town clerk. Um, I assume she has it, but we haven't heard from her about it. Um, so so um, Myra, um, I sent it this morning to everybody. Yeah, I'm actually trying to, I'm trying to open the link right now, to be honest. And it doesn't uh, could, open. Could you, yeah, could you just resend the link? Um, I think that, oh wait, nope, I didn't get it. Uh, the link was broken, unfortunately. Could you just oh, um, huh. resend it? Yeah, I can just, uh, I can paste the text onto the front of an email. Oh, um, yeah, I think Yours doesn't work either. I'm looking. Okay. Anyway, I can, um, if somebody else wants to take over for a minute, or when Maureen's talking, I can just go and look and send those things again. Yeah, mine yeah, didn't work either. And yours doesn't work. Okay, I'll try to paste yeah. the text in the in the face of an email. It says oh, no. Uh, you know what? I um I uh, was able to Google it. I will um. I'll email it. To, I have I have it now. Um, so I'm going to email everyone the link. Yeah, it says in me 404 not found. Uh huh. Yeah. That's, okay. that's always 
somehow it maybe it just lo got lost in the translation because I was able to open it when they sent it to me. So, okay, all right. But anyway, it's a cool thing, um, and it's available to people all over the state. And I think the town clerk should have it, and the town clerk should make it known um, somehow on the website. Um, that's what I would hope that this committee would ask her to do. Um, because it's it's sort of cool. People in Boston and Worcester worked for it, and it does pertain to all of us. And the one that they have pertains through all elections through 2025, um, which is pretty cool. Very nice. All right. So um, we have those. Those are my two announcements. And you want me to send the thing from Lynn, so I will do that right now. Um, you want to go on to the next thing, Maureen? Um, sure, let's see here. Um, so let's see here, uh, starting with new business. Well, actually, uh, firstly, um, uh, we can, um, there are no members of the public present. So, um, so uh, we can skip over the general public comment period, um, but we could loop back to that at the end of the meeting in case anyone from the public um, is in attendance um, for under new business for recently, um, comp uh, uh, the item is recently comp uh, completed ADA improvements in downtown. Um, so I wanted to, if you give me a minute, I, I don't know oh, if my, uh, uh, you just give me a minute. I pulled together some slides um, it might not be ready yet. Um, hold on one second. Let's see, Jones Library projects, town projects. Hmm. Well, I just wanted to um, highlight on some town projects um, that um, have been uh, uh, finished in downtown um, that specifically deal with ADA improvements. And um, so, um, as you know, um, you, the town received a Mass Office on Disabilities grant a few years ago uh, for the cr uh, a couple crosswalks uh, and for a sidewalk. Um, so um, that work has been uh, completed. And so the crosswalk that's in front of CVS has, uh, be, has been um, 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 reconstructed and repainted and uh, the crosswalk that is at the corner of Coles in North Pleasant Street where Ruger's Bagel has been uh, replaced as well. Those, um, the, the existing conditions um, before construction um, were really crumbly and, and pieces of pavement were sort of broken up. And so that has all been um, resurfaced and is nice and smooth um, with, uh, with uh, restriping, and then the uh, sidewalk that is that connects uh, North Pleasant Street to the back uh, parking garage, um, it's known as Pleasant Walk, has been resurfaced and is was in, was in poor condition, and now it has a brand new concrete um, walkway um, that's nice and smooth, and um, DPW, and so that was grant funded. Uh, DPW went ahead and re um, re uh, constructed this uh, uh, crosswalk that's in front of uh, Zanos, which is along North Pleasant Street, um, and uh, they restriped it as well. Um, and um, the crosswalk that is along Amity Street in front of the Jones Library um, has been restriped as well. Um, I saw a lease at the ribbon cutting at, for the new uh, ADA accessible ramp for the bang center, um, which that was, I'm so glad to, um, that you were able to attend that at least. Um, so the town, you know, um, uh, the town uh, constructed, yeah, a new, a new ramp um, connecting, um, connecting the uh, Musanti, Musanti health center to the bangs, to the bangs, um, 
to the uh, which is located within the bank center and so the ramp connects that that doorway to the boltwood walk area um and then it also provides a nice connection for residents at the clark um, house um and they did a really good job with landscaping as well and part of that part of that project um you know it focused on providing a brand new ramp um, next to it is uh, existing stairs, uh, which are, were in really bad shape, crumbling in, in pieces. And so the stair staircase has has been re, um, reconstructed. Um, and so that is in good condition now. And let's see here. I believe those were the projects I wanted to highlight that have been um, uh, corrected in the last year. Um, so um, it's definitely a, a good step in the right direction and the town is, um, you know, always trying to find um, grant opportunities and projects in downtown and throughout the town to, to uh, make ADA improvements. They did do a good job. It looks great. Yeah, good. I got to think. watch the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, for capital project requests, so um, so I did go ahead and I um, there is a new mass office on disability grant uh, cycle. Um, the grant was due last week, and um, we did file an application for that, which will be for um, fixing a broken autom automatic door opener. Um, and there's uh, of the front door entrance to the bank center. Um, and so it currently is not working. And there's also problems associated with the door itself. And there is um, some sloping issues um, in the front walkway leading up to the door. So the grant will focus on that. And part of our, you know, our due diligence of figuring out will, um, you know, what projects would fit well for this MOD grant. We had also looked at um, providing um, assisted listening devices. Um, unfortunately, the grant only can cover so much, um, so much um, money-wise. And so the door project, again, looking at the automatic door opener um, and replacing the door and, um, and fixing the sloping issue, that is uh, about $100,000. So, and the assisted listening devices is also around the same amount of money. So, so we did have, so we um, did not include the assisted listening devices. We did part of that process of looking into, you know, which project would make sense. We had a, um, a uh, auto, we had a, a sound consultant come in um, and meet with staff. Um, he met with myself, our IT director, our facilities manager and our senior services director. And we all met at the bank center and we looked at um, the various rooms um, of the bank center um, and, um, and explained what kind of uses typically take place there, you know, in non COVID times and also during uh, COVID times with there's, you know, uh, vaccination um, clinic there. Um, and um, there's Meals on Wheels, and there, in, you know, in, in non-COVID times, the rooms are used for fitness classes for seniors. Um, um, occasionally, uh, town staff use it for public meeting rooms. I, I think the town council have perhaps even had meetings in there at times, and there's all kinds of um, human social services provided there, and of course, the senior services um, is located there as well as the veteran services. Um, and I'm sure the list goes on and on of who, what, who uses those rooms and for what purposes. So, um, we gained a lot of valuable information about that. And we were able to get a cost estimate from the sound consultant, um, who, um, the way I found out about the sound consultant is, is that he recently worked with the city of Northampton to provide assistive listening devices, um, and so we, um, Jeremiah LaPlante, the, our facilities manager, is going to, uh, has made a request, he did this last week, um, as part of the capital projects request to provide assisted listening devices 
um, based on um, our our cons um, our um, consultation with this sound consultant, and so that will be put in for um, the capital project requests. So that's something that uh, I think I personally am excited about. So, and I, I know that Helen, who's our senior services director, is, is very um, excited about that as well. Um, and what happened to Mary Beth? Is she, she gone? She has, um, before she worked for the town, she worked for the DA's office and she has returned to that role. Um, I had no idea. Yeah, that happened. Huh. Um, feels like me uh, two months ago that happened. So um, Helen, um, I can't think of Helen's last name, but she is um, at least the interim senior services director. I, I don't know if if that will be a permanent thing or or what. Um, so um, Mary Beth, I think, is um, still providing some guidance in the sort of transition a little bit. Um, yeah, and so does anyone have any questions about the completed ADA projects and um, and the MOD grant and the assisted listening devices? Yeah, Maureen, I have two things come to my mind, although these were discussed previously, but just to, for me to go over that, maybe there might be some room in one of these grant proposals for it, if not too late. One of them is I watch a, um, in the local uh, news last night, I watch something they're doing in one of the towns south of us, can't remember which town, they are installing lock boxes uh, in the outside doors where seniors and disabled folks live. And they were explaining what it was. Like if there is a call, a 911 call, and they will know that this person, they identify whether they're senior citizens or disabled people, and they know that there is a lockbox lock here. And um, that might be something. And they said the town invested, like about, I forgot my $35,000, $35, and they got 150 of these. And they're now waiting for calls and they're ready to come and install these devices. Hmm. So I Can you explain this? Be, I don't understand what you're saying. Uh, it what is do they some, do? Myra, they showed the pictures. It is some kind of a box that only the fire department or the um, 911 ambulance and things like that can have access. And they have a key, hidden key in that, that will open the front door of your house. Say uh -huh. I'm in bed, you know, and I feel bad and I press 911 oh, and they okay. know how to open my door without breaking my doors. Right. We have that so, in front of, um, for our building. Yeah. Yeah, so I thought that was a very nice uh, thing. And I don't know where Amherst is because I remember vaguely that they were talking about it. And another thing that also comes to my mind, which was discussed, discussed previously, was to have a database of people that are disabled and that are seniors. They want to be on a list. Like when I called 911 for some service, they know that, aha, uh -huh, okay, this is coming from Seren, and then she's disabled. I mean, this hmm. requires building a database. I'm sure there are some people that will be against having their names there. So be it. If they don't want to be identified, they don't have to be. But there might be some of us that want to want a 911 call, uh, call center to know that we cannot just come easily access the door or come and let them in. It was called Enhanced 911, and there's an application. It's E911 and there's an application for it and um, it's voluntary so that 
it doesn't matter what town you live in, but you can sign up for it so that the first responders are aware that you're a person with a disability and you live in such and such address and, and you're there if a fire happens or a medical emergency or you know, well, something that uh, Maureen, in that to. case, is there any way this could be publicized in the mm -hmm. town site? Because I'm, I'm not aware of this. I will definitely look into this and um, will report back any information that I have. Um, and I can speak with our... Um, first responders. Um, Tori, do you have the application um, link? Stavros you know has the application. Um, so, I mean, is that something you give out routinely in your work so that you could even send it to us? I could get a copy. Um, I don't know how up to date it is, um, but we were, when we were doing intakes with people in person, we would let them know that it existed and give them the option to, you know, fill that out. And, huh. and then okay, well then you don't, if you don't think it's up to date, maybe then Maureen, if you could get us one that's up to date. Yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, like the thing with the voting, there are certain things that should be on the town website. Um, yeah, exactly. And I don't know where they may, should be. Amherst may have their own uh, form or you may be able to do it online now um, mm -hmm. but it, it is something that Stavros was making people aware of when oh. we were in person well th thank you um, Sarah and Tori and Myra for um, for bringing this up and um, I wasn't aware of this um, e911 and I wasn't this application I've heard of it but I was never aware of what it really was yeah, so oh, let yeah. me look into it and um, I will get you guys, uh, I'll, I'll um, report back of the information that I learn of and see how the town can help, you know, in, educate and inform um, residents of this um, and see if, if it, you know, does it make sense to put it on the website and if oh, so, yeah. where, it totally et makes sense and, to put yeah. it on the website. Um, um, but where? They, I mean, are we going to have a section? I mean, this is another conversation yeah, that, that would we be need great to have to about have the section. website. Yeah. You know, about the website, where do we put things like that? Are we going to have, a, is there, are they going to put on or should they put on a part that says for citizens with disabilities? And then you can put a lot of things there that pertain to a lot of different things, yeah. as well as, um, you know, I mean, I think we haven't heard anything about the website. Um, they talked about, you know, redoing it, um, but we haven't heard anything about it. And we, we should probably have the web developers come in at some point and, and talk to us about, you know, are there going yeah. to be ways for people with disabilities to quickly access information, not buried five levels down in the website? Um, yes. So that, um, I think that's another thing we could, we could that would grow out of this conversation because the voting thing should go on there and this thing should go on yeah. there. And I'm sure if we thought about it for 15 minutes, we'd come up with other things. Yeah. Um, so the enhanced 911 would not have, you know, people would not be giving their keys to the first responders. Right. Um, no, it's just to make them aware that right. you live at such and such of an address and, or, or apartment complex or you know wherever and and that you are a person with a disability yep and yeah and the the keys thing um i don't know it would be interesting to talk to the senior center person to see if they are actually working on that with the town and if they're not um i don't know if i mean if we were to work on it it would be for a very small population of people who want to say they have disabilities to the town and put out a key otherwise you know put out a lockbox otherwise it would be senior citizens you know there's safety in numbers it would be really good there's power in numbers it would be really good if that could be a joint effort if people want to participate in it so that's cool what station did you see that on Sarah? 
Uh, I think it was on um, uh, Western Mass News. And do you remember what town it was? No, I feel like, was it Agawam or, yeah, and it was last night. And I said, whoa, I would really think this is so important. And it's not really, it's, it's not only for disabled people. There are lots of seniors in that situation. Yep. Yeah, and that's why I said we should long, work with them on it. Yeah, and yeah, then they were saying that it will cost so much more money for the owner of the house to get new doors because they will break through the windows yeah. and right. their windows next to the door and things like that. And they said how secure it is and if uh, no one can really open that lockbox besides the officials. In, in the past, of course, you know, I'm sure there are people that will break into those boxes, but, you know, <laughs> in, in the past, the senior center has advertised the lockbox in its newsletter, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, OK. If you get the senior center newsletter, which anybody can get, if you go yep. if you go to the uh, town website and, and go to senior center, you can log on to click on to get their uh, newsletter. And I think in the past they've advertised the uh, lockbox. So it went out to a larger population, just not just to people with disabilities, but to any senior. Well, I will and, certainly um, bring this up um, with Helen as well, um, who's yeah, again, the kind of, yeah, so right, yeah. Right. And with the good. public works maybe. And the, the yeah. um, I don't want to trust them with anything. The lockboxes that you're referring to, uh, Anyone can purchase them and put your own key in it. Um, right. Yeah. But if they but have a certain the, kind of one that the first responders can open with some right. kind of a master. That's right. Although that is a little bit scary, I have to say. But And they um, said fire department was installing these and they were waiting for calls from the people. Okay. All right. So that's good. We can try to find out about that. And yeah. um, now I'm not even sure where we are on the agenda. Um, what would be? Uh, let's see here. So a capital project request. So I have, um, I, I will, um, I think it would, might be helpful to, um, I know at the last meeting, we, the committee had discussed, well, what is, you know, the capital project? request uh, process and um, you had asked if uh, Kathy Sh Shane could attend uh, counselor oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shane. So um, it is, as you all know, um, the um, campaign season for the upcoming election. So um, folks have been very busy. Um, and so um, I, I think that um, after the election that would be um, helpful to you know, either if, she, you know, her or someone else could either provide a explanation by email or even better come to a meeting and, and sort of explain that. Um, and also, I, I think it maybe would be helpful to inv invite um, our, our assistant town manager, Dave Zomack, who, who could give a sort of broader overview of town projects and, and sort of, you know, uh, what are what are um, upcoming town what are current town projects and what are upcoming town pro projects that he's aware of and um, talk also talk to him about um, the broader view of ca capital projects and then Kathy um, or uh, Kathy Shane could then get into the nitty-gritty of what does that process look like particularly in, in relation to, you know, ADA improvements. How do, how, how do all these town projects um, capture ADA improvements? Okay, so you already told us that they have put the, the assistive listening devices in, but we don't know how many years out they have a plan. We don't know what things we, right? I mean, it would be good if we could say, okay, FY22 is in there or FY23. I'm not even sure what that's for. Maybe FY23. But it, it, yeah, is it, for it would be 23. Yep. It's okay. So um, 
so we should find out what we would need to do about sidewalks and about other ongoing um, issues that are not just for the downtown, but for this whole town. Sidewalks, some of the roads that are in dreadful condition, um, you know, and that, that, that it just really needs to continue to happen and that it is a disability issue, not just a driving people issue. And I know some people with disabilities drive. Um, okay, um, any, any, yeah, so for, so we're talking about Kathy coming, maybe she could come in December, maybe we could get Sharon Sherry to come in November if it passes, right? Sure, and, and again, this is all based on their availability. So, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. Um, so well, we, Kathy we'll is to going to win because she's unopposed, so. Yeah. Yeah, so we just, uh, I just want to say, like, you know, Sharon Sherry could be on vacation the second Tuesday yeah. of November or, yeah. or what, you know, we don't know what yeah. their availability well, is yeah. specifically. Yeah. yeah. But we would definitely like to hear from those people on those two topics. Anything else? Um, I forget. Oh, yeah, we had to get to the, you told us, you sent us an email that the conversation about Pomeroy had been delayed again. So it didn't happen last night. It's now going to happen in November. Yeah. So uh, let me check my. You know notes. what the holdup is? I don't. Yeah. So what is that? Um. So I I I I keep on updating my calendar so I don't forget. So um, it did get pushed back to November eighth. Okay. Uh, for the town council to discuss it and i have it in my calendar to check with their staff liaison the week before to say is it being pushed back again or what's going on so i'll i'll i will um provide you updates as as they become available and you don't know what the holdup is i don't okay but there's still only a 25 percent. they have not progressed beyond that correct and they they can't do that until the town council signs off on it. Um, of course, the town council. So hopefully the town council will invite us to speak to it even during the conversation of it. I guess we should contact Lynn um, and ask her to make sure that we have an opportunity to speak when it comes up, not just in the public comment period that's before the discussion happens because that's not useful. We would need to be able to respond to what they say. Can we, um, I suppose I can send her an email and ask her for that right. Correct, what do you think? You can certainly ask. Because their comment period is before, um, before it would come up and then we, we make comments and then they just do what they want and they never hear from us, so. Um, I don't know if we're supposed to be included directly. I mean, if they're doing it on the 8th, we have a meeting likely on the 9th, although we didn't determine that exactly yet. Somebody should come maybe to us about 25%. What do you think? It's the same, it's the same week. Um, what do people think? Did the project start at all or? Uh, are we expecting them to speak to us when 25% of the design is completed? Well, that's what it is. They, yeah, that's when the town council expects them to come and they have not, I mean, they keep canceling it. So, but it, it happens that their meeting on that they're gonna discuss it is the eighth and our meeting is the ninth. So it would be useful, I think, to have somebody on standby to talk to us at least, um, I mean, I don't know who intends to go to the meeting on the 8th. It's all Zoom, so it's not hard to go to it, but it so all depends on you know how you would do it. Perhaps Myra, you in your email to Lynn, you could indicate, and then um, during the meeting itself, you could indicate that if, if, this, if, the, if the committee, um, feels that you all want to review the, this project at the 25% period, uh, which is 
Well, we already asked for that. Yeah. So you could remind her and say that the, the DAAC, you know, respectfully requests that the town council um, provide, uh, uh, send, send this project um, at 25% review to the DAAC for review and comment and have a project representative attend okay. the DAAC meeting to, you know, okay. to explain yep. it and all the ins and okay. outs and all that. Okay. All right. I also, I, I had a, a, hard, a lot of trouble, I guess, when I'm on Zoom, my computer doesn't like cooperating much. So I was able to send you the thing from Lynn Maureen, but I wasn't able to put anybody else's name in it. Maybe Tori is still in there. I don't know. I got Tori in, but I couldn't get anyone else in. So you'll have to send it out, the, the request for comments about the town manager evaluation. Sure. Yeah, I'll forward that along. Did you get it? Uh, not yet, but I, I have actually received my own version of it. So I'll. Um, oh, um, OK, well, you didn't get the thing I sent. No, huh. no, not yet. Oh, my God. OK, my computer doesn't like to multitask. That's right. Yeah, right. Just send I it, can, try to send yeah, it. And I can send and... it to you when we're done. Yeah. OK, um, so that's for the, um, and the. Um, I think you told us about the North comment that there was going to be a meeting to discuss parking in town, handicap parking. So I didn't know where you, if, if you had any more information about that. Yeah, so I actually did have a brief meeting with staff about the North Common project and um, it, um, they, um, staff will be uh, working to finalize the plan in the next uh, several months. And as part of that process, uh, they will return to various boards for review and comment, including the DAAC. Um, okay. It's, yeah, so th definitely th th this will be um, a project that this committee will have an opportunity to review and comment. Okay, because there were serious concerns about one-way streets, parking on that street in front of Boltwood. Yeah. Um, you know, and that, I, don't, I don't know that we ever heard a resolution because what their proposal was to make it a one-way street, which was not really an acceptable option. So I don't know how far they got with hearing what we had to say because they made a plan that had it be a one-way street and they never even thought about the problem that you can't park vehicles with. You know, In which uh, direction was that one way? South. Was it from a Main Street to yeah. Route 9 direction? Yeah. And then, in, and also we, I, I remember Maureen, you were telling maybe we should look into handicap parking behind the town hall. And I just happened to be parking there a few weeks ago. And I said, let me see what it is. And I could only see one then accessible spot there. And then there was a nice electric car charging station there. And then I did not see, and then I know there were some uh, spaces reserved for staff and, but maybe more handicapped parking could be provided there as well. I don't know. I don't know. I just hope they're not gonna get too far without thinking about the fact that they created a place for parking that is not um, viable for handicapped parking. That's right. Right. Um, and that's what I, that's the message I think we were hoping that they would get. So the fact that they're going to come and talk to us, that's pretty nice, but that going to come to us pretty far into the process. That's why, yeah. um, what did you, what did they say when you told them that, that Boltwood one way was not an acceptable option? Uh, did yeah, they care? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, of course, yes. Of you know, of course, uh, staff is um, uh, they they took that information as valuable and um, and as they start to uh, make those revisions to get into the final stretch of finalizing the plan, they'll de they'll definitely take that into consideration. Um, so yeah, I, I I thought those comments were really useful, and I did pass those along um, to staff. So. Um, they haven't had an opportunity to start working on making the revisions to the plan. So 
Okay. Um, but they they will start to do that in the next um, couple of weeks or a couple of months. I'm not really sure where they are um, time wise. Okay, but you know this changes fundamentally their plan. So I want to make sure that they either fix it before they get very far into it at all, yeah. or figure out how they're going to compensate for it. Um, and they they took away the parking lot. So yes. I don't think, I mean, this is not a down the road when they get closer, take it into consideration. This is a beginning before they get involved with it at all. Their fundamental plan had what this committee deems to be a real serious flaw. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure when they're gonna think about it, but so many things just happen and then they go, oh yeah, we're sorry. We didn't, we didn't, we heard you, but we didn't do anything about it. And I just keep hearing, you know, the reading the Triangle Street DAAC minutes and knowing that they were completely ignored. So we have a DPD, a DPW um, that has a history of ignoring things. So I want to make sure that it that it doesn't happen, that it is just too late to do anything about it. Does this, I mean, I'm sure the committee agrees, yes? Yes. Yes. Wholeheartedly, Myra. And yes. I don't even understand why they chose this project, because all in the papers they're talking about uh, parking problems, not just handicapped parking, but parking, period. And then all of a sudden they are getting rid of a nice parking place and uh, for aesthetic reasons, I don't know. It's just mind boggling to me. Doesn't make sense to me. But um, Serena, I have a question. Yes. So you parked behind uh, Town Hall, correct? Yes. And so I'm wondering, did you find that a long walk from or a long way from where you were going? Yes. 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 I found that too we were, in the past. Yeah, we were uh, we were going to go to Boltwood Inn for dinner. And it was a long walk, but I was not alone. I was together with my daughter and my granddaughter. It's also so, uphill. It's still yes. it's still I mean, much it's a further. steep hill. Yes, it is. And also the sidewalks that we, we, I was walking on, I, I kept telling Yishim, wait, go slow, go slow. There's a, there's a crack, you know, on this concrete yep. sidewalk. There's so yep. many cracks that yep. I have to, my eyes were on the sidewalk and Yishim doesn't see it because she's behind me. So I was alerting her and I said, what in the world why don't somebody put some concrete or something fill those little gaps here and there until they get really big but yes it, 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 tired of bringing the same issues and i'm sure it's not only my personal issue no nope. i'm sure there are lots of other is and also mothers Pushing strollers will face right. the same issues as right. well. Let's also, see, Sarah, is... it, it, it's um, if if I'm thinking of the same place you are, like I used to park there too, next to where the uh, where you could uh, charge your electric vehicle. Yes, and, and yes. If you want to get back to Main Street, you have to walk through the driveway that yes. other cars might be coming into. So yes. it's not necessarily the safest either. For, exactly. uh, That's true. That, that yes. Thought. And this is why I want to say to them, it really is not an alternative option to park back there because it isn't safe to walk through that driveway or wheel or whatever you're using to mobilize. Yes. But, and it's, it's too far away. Whereas yes. if they would just keep that parking lot, it's much closer to town restaurants, wherever you yes. want to go in town, than parking behind town hall. 
Yeah. Maureen, and who's in charge of that project? Do you know? Uh, Dave Zomack. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I remember maybe. Chris Chris Burstrom. I think she talked about it too. Yeah. It is. Yep. And she's part of that team. Yep. Yeah. There aren't an equitable number of, of of spaces anyway. There are more spaces that they're talking about taking away. Yeah. And then they're putting back in. I, so it's you know it's a problem all around. That's well, right. the people who took away the parking lot are the town council. Um, right. A majority of the town council uh, voted, I believe, idiotically to take away that entire parking lot. Um, and I'm sure the rest of this committee thinks yes. that too. But there yes. were a bunch of town councilors who didn't think there's a parking problem, who thought that there was plenty of room that you could go park behind CVS. This is all ableism, if you ask me. You know, it's like, sure, I, I'm 40 years old. I can walk or I can ride my bike. So everybody else can too, big deal. That's why, yeah. because they want the green stuff and they want, you know, the grass and they want the park and they want it brought back to its original purpose and all of that. That's what they said. I listened to it with dismay. Um, and I, I don't know, uh, you know, then it all came to us. The town council told them to do that. So in all fairness, it's not the decision of, of uh, Dave Zomek or Chris Brestrup. They have to implement the completely ridiculous charge that they got. However, um, what the part of the charge was to do away with all reasonable handicap parking. So they are not allowed to do that. And whether they got a charge for that or not, they have to fix it because they're not allowed to do away with the handicap parking. You can't park on the street. You can't park on Main Street. You won't be able to park on Boltwood. You won't be able to park in a parking lot. They have done nothing to fix that. And the, the town council really doesn't have authority over whether or not there's gonna be handicapped parking downtown. I mean, that's the state law and the federal law. So I think that, you know, I'm gonna write a letter to, I, I, I assume this committee would endorse a letter to Dave Zomek telling him that this committee has, we should take a vote, I think. Um, but I guess the purpose of my of the letter would be to let them know that we are extremely concerned about the loss of uh, all handicapped parking that is reasonable to use to get to town businesses because Boltwood will not be usable and the town uh, uh, and the um, the parking lot is gone. So that they need to think about what they're going to do, even given their charge to take the parking lot out, they're gonna to have to make some kind of accommodation for handicapped parking. Yes. And right. on street parking, parallel parking is not acceptable because it's not safe for us. Right. No. We don't want to open into the street, you know, right. get out of our vehicles right, right in the street. Okay, I can we take what, a vote on this? Cause I think it's not yes. okay coming from me. I will second that motion, Myra. Okay. Um, take a vote. Tori, agree, disagree? I agree. Ruth? Yes. Elise? Yes. Um, Saren said yes. Old I say yes. yes. Oh, yeah. And um, speaking of which, there's only five of us here. Marty is absent, but we're supposed to have another member, and I've heard nothing. And that's it's been a couple months already. So do you know what's going on with that? Uh, I'm not sure where where um, the the town is with that process. Um, I can reach out to um, the town manager's sure. office um, yeah. to see um, where um, it, it, you know. I, I believe that they have advertised that there is a vacancy available yes. on this committee. Um, but yeah, I'll touch base with um, the town manager's office about that. If I'm remembering correctly, I thought at the time that Xander was appointed, wasn't there more than one person interested or yes, not? There yeah. indeed was. Yes. And I don't know if that person is still interested, um, but that person was um, qualified for sure. I think there was uh, that person was a physician and then 
he no. or she we threw no 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 that was the original appointment that oh. was before xander that when when we interviewed xander we also interviewed another person mm -hmm. um and that person was also somebody who would have been very good on this committee and so i don't know i mean at the time i remember asking do we just get can we just contact that other person and see if that other person is still interested um, but I don't know, maybe they can't do that. I don't know what they're legal, what they're legally bound to do. I think they have to post it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we have anything else? Do I we... didn't get a chance to draft the meeting minutes from September 21st. Oh, okay. So sorry. Uh, so next month. That's okay. Yeah. It's, it's hard to keep okay. up with, with everything. Um, oh, but yeah, I'll, absolutely. I'll get, I'll, you know, great. So I, I'm just, writing two letters, one to Lynn Griesmer and one to Dave Zomek, correct? Right. Okay. And then right. uh, we're going, somebody was going to forward us Lynn Griesmer's email asking for yes. comments. And I know I did not get it. Okay. Myself. So... Um, Maureen didn't get what I have. You have one that maybe went to town employees. Maybe you have a different one. I, it might so, be a different, uh, yeah. So I can um, send the one, I, as soon as I'm off of Zoom, I'm sure I'll be able to forward it. My okay, computer was great. just not cooperating. So I can okay. forward the thing from Lynn. Um, okay. Anybody have, uh, well, I'm not very oh, good at sticking to agendas, I, but we are good at discussing things. But okay. I do have, I do have a comment. Okay. Um, so sometimes our meetings get pushed to what is this, the third week of the month, and we typically are supposed to meet on the second of second Tuesday of each month. And um, I happen to be on another committee that meets the third. Tuesday of the month, and I'm finding it difficult to have two Zoom meetings in one day. Um, so I am asking that if we need to push to the third week, can we meet on a, a different day than Tuesday? Or can we stick with the second week? Or is I, I understand it's difficult when there's um, holidays um, and stuff and commitments, but, um, I'm just putting it out there. Yep. Well, I apologize for last month. I, somebody died on Sunday and the funeral was Tuesday morning. So I didn't have any choice yeah. about that, but oh, it yeah. turned out that a bunch of other people couldn't be here either. Um, and, and that's fine. I'm just, uh, I just want to put this out there that maybe if it needs to be pushed to the third week, could we meet on Wednesday or I cannot Thursday? do Wednesday or Thursday. I have Zoom classes okay. on those days. But I can do Monday. I can do Friday. I cannot do Monday. And some Fridays I can do. Um, I'm on the same other committee that Tori's on and I get the, I, I understand the problem. Um, but well, let's just do our best to let's see what we can be do. consistent we'll keep, to stay yeah. with the second Tuesday of each month. And um, and if for some reason um, it needs to get postponed, um, you know, I, I could I could um, offer different times or days um, okay. as a substitute. Um, so, you know, maybe it, like, you know, we meet the fourth Tuesday. I don't know uh, if people are agreeable, but, you know, the, it's a rarity that we um, switch the meeting date, but, you know, things sometimes pop up. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, this I is just two in a row. Yeah. I understand. We did two in a row. Just, yeah. Yeah. And okay. I completely understand that. I'm just asking if we could maybe explore another day if that has to happen. Yeah. yeah. The next time we have to do it, we'll put out more than Tuesday and we'll see what, okay. what, you know, what, what people can do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mornings cool. work Thanks better for the, for me. Say that again, please. Mornings. Um, I'm flexible except mornings are the best for me. Okay. Good to know. Not afternoon. 
Okay. All right. So um, hey, next meeting you. date in that vein, next meeting date should be the 9th of November. Yeah, and okay, hopefully, huh? hopefully we can have the library director or somebody having to do with the 25% uh, status of the project of the um, bulk of the um, primary project. Right? Those were the two things. I have a, a, a concern which I just want to share. Oh, the capital too. It's more like on a, just one sec. I'm just marking my calendar for the DAC meeting for, okay, I got it. So it seems like um, there, there are some people in the town that are looking for what grants are available out there. And they say something and they say, huh, this makes sense. And without going into uh, what the impact of it would be. Like I think this a common project is a similar thing. So I know they're going to get some state funding for this. So the town says, sure, let's go ahead with it. So without really looking into the pros and cons of it, that's my feeling, but I don't know how uh, correct I am. And the Pomeroy Lane also, I was hoping to work on it to improve it rather than tear it down and do a turn, a, like, uh, what is that? The, the, uh, the circle kind of a application. Because there are lots of businesses in the area. It's not like something that will provide easy traffic flow, like I have seen at Cape a lot. So that was my concern. So all the little struggles I see happening, it's after they start that project. And in a way, there is the commitment. So what is going to happen? And it's the same thing that happened with the library. They already made the commitment, commitment that they are, they are getting the grant from the state. And now we have to work around it, whether there were enough signatures or not. So that was an issue. Just so to clarify it, about the Pomeroy yeah. Village intersection. So, you know, the town council, uh, they needed to vote on what improvements should be made to the intersection. And they made that vote, um, I'm guessing in May, I'm um, a little fuzzy on which month, but so the months leading up to that May vote, you know, the town um, had uh, public outreach opportunities and had various meetings to discuss, you know, what are the existing conditions, what doesn't work at that intersection, and what improvements do members of the public want to see there. And so the vote made by the town council was a reflection of what, what, um, what folks would like to see there. So it wasn't just, it wasn't just hey, we're gonna do a roundabout. It was based on reaching out to the public and asking for their input and reaching out to the, the, you know, the property owners and the business owners within that vicinity. So it wasn't just sort of decided upon that you know, at random, they're gonna put a roundabout. There was a lot of uh, due diligence provided by staff um, that um, uh, engaged the public for several months about that. I just wanted to clarify that. They absolutely did engage the public. There wasn't unanimous consent by the public as to whether it should be a roundabout or not. There were certainly business owners that didn't want a roundabout for the reasons that Saren just said. So it wasn't like there was a unanimous opinion about it. They, the town council, that they did reach out. They did hold all the right meetings. I'm not sure there would have been, I'm not sure that anybody would have been happy if they went, if they, you know, I'm not sure everybody would, would have been happy if they went the other way either. But, you know, they had to make a decision. They made a decision that, you know, they made the one they made. They also had, a lot of public input for the North Common. They did. They asked the town downtown business people. The downtown business people <laughs> said, we need the parking lot. They decided yeah. to vote against it anyway. I mean, they did do that. Um, so, and, you know, and as for the, um, what was the other one you brought up? The library? 
um, yeah. the library, the town council voted on the library. They had a lot of input. They had, you know, the signatures, all that stuff came up, but it all started by one person. They didn't have enough signatures, just like there weren't enough signatures to force the, um, to force the, the um, moratorium. I mean, you win, you win, you lose, you lose. Um, but I can't say they haven't gone through the procedures. I wouldn't say that that, I would say that, I would say the town council has not made good decisions, but I wouldn't say that they didn't go through the right procedures. They just did what they wanted to do in the end anyway. I mean, that's, that's, that's know, my feeling. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why we have elections. And that's right. why, I mean, that's the whole, you know, you don't like what they do. You're supposed to, if you have an opportunity to change who is running, or if you have an opportunity to run yourself, that's what you're supposed to do. I mean, I'm, you know, unfortunately, you know, I mean, I've not won too many elections in my life. <laughs> you know, most of the people I vote for don't win. <laughs> but, um, you know, that we, I think process wise, they're clean. Decision making wise, maybe not. But I'm just concerned. And what I'm really concerned about is when committees in the town, when the business community says we want a parking lot, they vote no. When the DAAC says we need some kind of signalization in the in the Triangle Street roundabout and it just never happens, that's not okay. I mean, for me, that's what's not okay. So, you know, we'll see what they come up with for Pomeroy, but, you know, they voted to do a roundabout. They did do all the, they did their due, due diligence and maybe they made the right decision and maybe they didn't, but they did, they did do what they were supposed to do. Um, anyway, I think what, what we're, what we, what is left to us is to make sure that given the decision that they made, that it's handled the right way. I'm, that, that's where I'm, looking at it from. We don't have the choice to tell them they can't do it, but we have input into how they do it. If they listen to our input. That is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, if we don't give them our input, then we can't say that we gave them our input, you know, like hopefully they'll listen. But I think the thing with the North Common and the parking downtown, I think that's really serious. And and they need not to get very far into this before they realize that they cannot do entirely what the town council told them to do. And they need to go back to the town council and they need to tell them why they can't do it. So I will write a letter. And um, I if think you're writing the letter and we support it as a committee, shouldn't we all see it? Sign the letter? Well, that's or, why we took the vote. Uh, okay. you, 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 um, you know, even it, if it's you, digital, digital signature. I mean, you guys have a couple options. You know, if if you want Myra to draft the email and just send it out, that's fine. Or if you would like Myra to draft the email and and uh, she can email it to me, and I can forward it along to everyone. Um, everyone could get a chance to review it. And if you have any comments, I could tweak it and then email it back to Myra. Uh, whatever um, you think. Yeah, what do you, what's your pleasure? Or we We've could, done this a we, bunch of times. <laughs> we can at least say that it's from the entire committee, right? I mean, yeah, even that's why I asked you to take a vote. Okay. Right. Okay. Because, okay. Then, because then I can say that we voted unanimously X. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't send this one. I won't ever send anything from the committee without asking you to take a vote. Everything that I've sent out, we've 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 dealt with um, on a vote. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that they understand that the whole committee feels this way. Yep. Yep. And Marty would too. I mean, she wasn't here, but. You know, I mean, she certainly she had all kinds of technical things to say about why they can't do it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> OK. All right. And it, do we have a motion to adjourn until the 9th of November? I second. second that. Somebody needs to make the motion. All right. I'll the, motion that we adjourn. OK. I second right. that. 
Cool. All right, Elise. Yes. Ruth. Yes. Um, Saren. Yes. Tori. Yes. And me. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. We're done. Thank you. Bye. Thank Thank you. Remember to vote Bye. November second. Yes. Right. Take care, everyone. Right.